Good morning. Beyond the Grave brought a phrase to mind that my mother Nancy, who set up our flower shop, used to use. She said, we mind our customers from the cradle to the grave, and that we do. We set up the flower shop in Bedford Row in what Limerick people refer to as the lying in hospital. It was the maternity in Limerick City for more than 100 years, I would think. Our flower shop was in what was called the matron's office. And we used to get nurses come in and say, oh, I nursed here, and this was the office. And they loved coming back into the building. We had adults who were born there come in whose parents had emigrated or whatever came back to see their native city or their parents native city but also wanted to see where they were born so one particular australian guy came in and i said off you go upstairs first floor was the delivery room so it was a strange flower shop in many ways but back to the floristry side of it back then we had to make wreaths it was a very i wouldn't call it cumbersome but it was a meticulous process whereby you had to get a wire frame and you had a sausage of moss on it which you wired onto it. Then each individual floret was cut, wired onto the top of the wire and hooked, and then the base of the wire was inserted into the moss, and so it went, and each piece of foliage went through that process. It was like an assembly line. Very time-consuming, but that's the only way we could do it at the time. So you made a perfect dome wreath, and each individual piece of foliage and each individual flower, rose lily, a flower of chrysanthemum, off the stem of chrysanthemum, or whatever, all were put together to make this wreath. The wires, florist shops can be damp and wet, of course, and the wires sometimes would get rusty, and florist fingers are never the cleanest fingers in the world. And my sister Helen worked there as well, and she used to run up the road to John Thompson's Undertakers with the wreaths. And I think at the time she kind of fancied John Thompson and she used to always dip her fingers in bleach so that she wouldn't be looking too grimy in front of Mr. Thompson at the time. But all the florists in Limerick City, O'Shaughnessy's flower shop and Eileen still works there, a member of the family, the flower studio ourselves, etc. That's how we and florists in the region all made our wreaths. From the florist perspective, we're actually very happy that that has changed. We have what we call foam or a lot of people call it Oasis. Oasis is a company who makes it and, along with others. So this product comes in circular wreath shapes. It comes in the letters. It comes in hearts. It comes in teddies. It comes in any conceivable shape you want it in. This company will make it. We soak the foam and we cut the flowers. We cut the foliage and you insert it into the foam. It's a lot easier and it makes I think, for more interesting pieces of funeral flowers. It also makes lovely the coffin sprays or the double-sided sheaves. A lot of people would tell us when they come in, sometimes people come in and thank you for what you've done for them. And they'll say that when they went back to the grave after the funeral, as some people like to do, to go back when it's all over and they have a quieter moment to themselves. And they tell us that the flowers look lovely and they were really pleased and they were still alive a week or two weeks later but that's because they're in the foam. Price-wise, in the 1950s, a standard wreath was five pounds. It was Jerry Griffin actually gave me this figure, which today would equate to around 120 euro. So we average spend on a funeral tribute or a wreath or a spray is 50 euro. When we had pounds, we got 50 pounds, and once we changed to euro, people stuck with the rounded figure of 5 and spend 50 euro. That's where it has uh, stayed quite a lot. Historically, flowers came via the Covent Garden flower market. They came a lot from Jersey because they have a good climate there to grow flowers. They came from the Dublin flower market. Now they come direct to Ireland and to us and to individual florists from the Dutch flower auction houses. When we now go online, before you sent your fax, your telegram or whatever, or phoned and ordered your flowers, now we just go online. And when I order from Holland, I'm looking at 3,500 types of flowers that I can click on and buy. So it gives us great access to a huge and wonderful variety of flowers. And bless the Dutch, they do know how to charge, but that's life. One aspect of floristry 
and funeral flowers that people tend not to see is the foliage and the greenery. And it's actually quite an expensive aspect of our business. Some Irish farmers have now gone into growing foliage. And there are, instead of having their cattle or whatever, they now have foliage farms. There's one farmer in, a foliage farmer in County Kerry, a grower, and he supplies Marks and Spencer's UK and Ireland with all their foliage. Many of the other growers are supplying the Dutch flower markets, and a lot of Irish florists are actually buying Irish foliage back from the Dutch auction houses. My father used to say, God made the world and the Dutch made Holland. And I often think that if the Dutch had a lot of the spare land that we have in this country, it would be very different land usage. Florists want undertakers on their books because they give us orders for funeral flowers for their clients. We also get funeral flowers ordered through, in our case, Interflora. In others' cases, it's other different relay organizations. We also get people coming into the shop and they will order their flowers personally from you because they know you, they're your customers or they're recommended to you. People will just ring up and order over the phone with their credit pay, with their credit card, you write the message. And then, of course, we have our own website, so people go online and you just get your email and your card message and your description. And these are the five ways that we get the requirements for our flowers. We deliver all of these products. Somebody said to me one time when I told them I was the delivery boy, it's just a term I kind of like, and they said, you were the delivery boy? And I said, yeah, I was. It was a very easy time in my life, going out to Rathkeel with one red rose and my arm out the window of my mother's car, but that's another day and another time. People in positions of power and influence obviously set trends, like fashion trends and flower trends. It is my memory that after the death of Princess Diana, she had an amazing coffin spray with lilies. I can still see them as they just ever so gently bounced as the coffin moved. We had many customers for quite a while after that particular funeral, which was probably one of the most viewed funerals in the world. And they would politely say they weren't trying to imitate the funeral, but they wanted that lily look. And that, I think, has stayed somewhat. Other trends that we pick up on is that people will say to us when they're ordering flowers that he or she loved their garden and they want a very country garden look. Others will say the person who has died was very colourful and they want lots of colour and many will stick with the classical tried and tested all white. We also do very natural woodland products and eco-friendly products. Sometimes people will want something as simple as a basket of lavender for the person they want to send the flowers to. We are also increasingly getting a requirement of church flowers. People want pedestal arrangements in the church to decorate the church somewhat. The single roses that people place in the graves are now, they're still used, usually red or white, and they're not in cellophane anymore. The cellophane isn't put into the ground. We also have no flower funerals and family flowers only funerals. At a familial level, my great-great-grandfather and his wife, Elizabeth, she was Protestant, he was Catholic. On her deathbed in the South Circular Road, just down from here in Harbour View, she converted to Catholicism so she could be buried with her husband, because back then that could not happen. He was Dan. He also had a son, Dan, who was an alderman with Limerick Corporation. His wife died quite young, having given birth, I think, to nine children. Strangely, I don't know why, but when you Google it, that was a no-flower funeral. In the same plot in Mount St. Lawrence, uh, my grandmother is buried there. Obviously, she died on a Christmas and Stephen's Day, so we came in and we made all the flowers for her. Back then, we were wiring all the flowers. It was Christmas. There weren't a lot of flowers. We were cutting up hyacinths and wiring hyacinth flowers, but we got her funeral flowers. She's not buried with her husband because he died during World War II. He's buried in a military graveyard in Malta. So when another Elizabeth in our family, there were lots of Dan's and lots of Elizabeth's, my Auntie Betty died, she was cremated. And personally, I actually found the whole experience quite wonderful. 
But before Betty died, she had said, I want lots of flowers. And I was at a funeral with her, and she said, see that? That's what I want. And I'm going, yes, bet. So she was cremated, and we brought half her ashes to Malta and the rest in the Macnesis in Mount St. Lawrence's. When we were in Malta, of course, we went into a Maltese florist in Valletta, and we got a beautiful spray of flowers to lay with Betty's ashes, but also at the grave of my grandfather, who had never stood there before. Quite an unusual experience. So in this plot in Mount St. Lawrence's, there are four generations. Out of one family, there were nine children, seven died very young. So there's a lot of people in this one plot. What's quite interesting is the Griffin undertakers handled them all. When Auntie Betty was dying, uh, I went into my dad and said, Dad, you better go to Betty. And he said, oh, no, I have a track warrant to Griffin's. It's your turn now. But I suppose the point is that I can see why people do stick with the same undertaker. They mind you, they take you through it. The funeral tributes, that is what we do. It's the last thing that a lot of people conceive themselves doing for their loved ones. They tell us that. We are sent, we're looking after their emotion. We're creating for them. They will put their own card message on. That's their message. Sometimes they don't use a card. The flowers are the message and the emotion. So getting flowers right on behalf of our clients is very important because to them it is very important that we get it right. And that is what we try to do. And again, in the lines of my mother, we mind them all from the cradle to the grave. Thank you.